system in the country that provides an easy and effective transition back to the community. So a program called Halfway Homes is now starting to come up so as to reduce relapse cases. On her fact-finding mission on what it takes to restore back sanity in the drug addict, Mwihaki Njogu visited Halfway, half, halfway Homes in Parklands and tells the following story. The biggest challenge for any recovering drug addict is staying clean once they leave rehabilitation centers, a problem that is now being curbed by the introduction of halfway houses, which are homes away from home and get to offer aftercare services. We visited Eden group of houses where rehabilitees are given an opportunity to mentor themselves. And this is the story of people and persons suffering from drug addiction and fighting it to the fullest. Fred Mwangi and Hezron Kuria have both been victims of addiction, a situation they describe as an intentional. I didn't choose this path, it happened. And uh, some people really want to stop it, to stop, but they can't by themselves because it's become a, a cycle, an addiction cycle. You're telling yourself that you can handle the alcohol, you can handle the drugs, you can handle it, all, all of these things, but your body is actually needing the alcohol, the, the drugs, so that it can, it can function for a day. The shackles of drug addiction caught up with Mwangi and Kuria, eventually costing them a chance to a university education at the time. I had been called earlier in 2016, but uh, due to my alcoholism, I couldn't attend classes. I went to rehab for four months. Uh, that was uh, in 2014. Uh, by that time, I dropped out of school. I was a school dropout, uh, and I was a university material. Uh, that's what I used to be told but I dropped out. According to a research done by World Health Organization, WHO, four out of every 100 people who lose their lives in Kenya is as a result of drug abuse. Nawal Shahid, now a counselor at Eden Halfway Houses, had her share of drinking spree misery before redemption. Especially for women, there are a lot of risk factors involved. Because you'd wake up, you're sleeping, you black out, and you wake up and you don't even know where you are. You start looking for the map back home, you're like, oh God, how did I end up in this place? As it is said, there is always a light at the end of the tunnel. For a while, she now guides drug addicts through the road of recovery. Now you see it clearly. And most, you know, addiction is just addiction. And we go through basically the same things, but with different stories. And you know, you look at someone, maybe they tend to be um, manipulative, and you're like, oh my God, this is me. This is what I used to do. It's actually been an eye opener, and it's been a humbling, humbling experience. As for Mwangi, time lost cannot be recovered. It pains him that he had to stop his life plans to undergo rehabilitation. There are so challenges I face is, uh, I think your, <coughs> the time I wasted sometimes in Andy, so because most of my classmates, they are ma they've married, you know, Nami Bado Sandon Merudichu, so it's kind of a hard, hard uh, acceptance. Justin Farah, a former heroin addict and currently executive director at Eden Homes, explains why he came up with such a facility. You know, after I left school, I was trained in the hospitality industry, and I got into heavy drug and drinking. Yeah? And um, as I went through my 20s, yeah, it became progressively worse, and to the point when, when I was about 29, I went into rehab in this country. And why is Farah so confident that halfway houses do work? Halfway houses are more, they enhance recovery, and it's more successful when, when someone comes into a halfway house. It is a societal responsibility to hold the hands of drug addicts and help them recover. But the same society that is meant to make them eventually breaks them. 
is there something you need the community to understand about someone maybe who's a drug addict? It would help if people actually uh, recognize this as a disease. No one, no one wants to be this way. Data collected by NACADA shows drug abuse prevalence in various regions within the nation. Nairobi, 17.5%, Eastern, 14.3%, Western, 13.4%, Rift Valley, 13.2%, Central, 10.6%, Northeastern and Nyanza at 2%. Susan Maua, in charge of public education and advocacy at NACADA, advocates for prevention before dealing with the crisis at a much later stage. What should actually happen is look at it in a bigger perspective. It is a social problem and that means that the individual is having a problem. Relapse, societal stigma and denial are faces that mark the life of a recovering drug addict who has hit rock bottom. Is it time for the government to consider investing more in halfway houses so as to offer aftercare services to complement the already existing rehabilitation centers to reduce the numbers of relapsing cases? Mwiha Kinjogu, KUTV, Nairobi. Thank you, Mihaki Njogu, for that detailed report. You know, we're taking a very